This video is going to show you how to create a flow map using the research you did on various living organisms. Here is the research I completed on four organisms. The first organism is Lactarius indigo, a blue milk mushroom, in Kingdom fungi and Phylum basidiomycota. The second organism is Yersinia pestis, in Kingdom U bacteria and Phylum proteobacteria. Yersinia pestis is the bacterium responsible for causing the bubonic plague, which killed tens of millions of people during the 1300s in Europe. My third and fourth organisms are both in Kingdom Animalia. One is a capybara, the world's largest rodent, which is found in Phylum chordata. The other is an unusual sea-dwelling animal called Euplectella aspergillum. Also known as glass sponges because they are made of silica, Euplectella aspergillum is classified in Phylum porifera. Using my research information, I can now create a flow map. I'm going to have to think carefully about the differences in my kingdoms and phylums that are represented. I'll start with a general term for all of my organisms. I'm going to choose living organisms. I am now thinking about the kingdoms. My organisms are found in three different kingdoms, so I need to find a way to distinguish between those kingdoms. I'm going to look for a difference between kingdoms fungi, eubacteria, and animalia. Using my notes from class, I notice that some of these kingdoms reproduce sexually while others reproduce asexually. I also notice that some of these kingdoms contain multicellular organisms, while others contain only unicellular organisms. However, rather than use the number of cells, I will use the type of cell. Some kingdoms are made up only of prokaryotes, while others are made of eukaryotes. So I create two boxes with these terms and connect them to my living organisms box. I need to work only with one side of my flow map now. I'll continue with prokaryotes first and come back to the eukaryotes later. When I review my research cards, I notice that only one of my organisms is a prokaryote, the Yersinia pestis bacterium. This means that I have reached the terminal end of this part of the flow map. I create a box with my phylum name, Phylum Proteobacteria. Now I need to finish the eukaryote side of the flow map. Since I have two kingdoms, fungi and animalia, that are eukaryotes, I need to narrow my flow map again by making two choices. I go back to my kingdoms notes from class and my organism research cards and find that only the fungi are capable of asexual reproduction. I create a choice box for asexual reproduction possible. For my other choice box, I could have said no asexual reproduction, but since one of our dichotomous key rules is to try and keep the descriptions positive, I choose to say sexual reproduction only. Again, I must choose to work on only one choice at a time. We'll go with the left choice again. I have reached the terminal end on asexual reproduction possible because this choice describes only kingdom fungi. Since I only have one organism in kingdom fungi, I add my phylum box for phylum basidiomycota and this leg of the flow map is finished. Now to finish the remaining choice box. I realize that both organisms left are kingdom animalia, meaning I must differentiate between the two animal phylums. When I review my organism research cards, I find that one organism, the capybara, is motile throughout life, while the sponge is only motile as a larva during the baby stage. I will use these characteristics as my choices. Again, working just on the left choice, I have reached a terminal end, so I fill in phylum chordata. Then I will go back to the choice on the right and fill in phylum porifera. Congratulations! We have now classified all four of our organisms to the phylum level. We can now use this flow map to help us create a dichotomous key.